software career paths career ladders you name it there are so many different names for the same thing it is extremely important as a developer to know what career path is right for you and what are the different levels you can go to as you grow in your career there are different titles in the industry and every title is so confusing that it's hard to know whether you should become an engineering manager or a staff developer or a technical lead so we will be talking about titles and how they can be so confusing and what are some things that you should be aware of in tech hello friends welcome back to my channel in this channel we talk about career development how you can grow as a developer how you can be more successful and also all about front-end development so let's get started so as a developer there are typically two career paths that you can take and there are different levels in different companies now there is a diagram in right in front of us and i'm just you showing you this diagram just to give you an understanding of the different levels and what these fancy titles are like so you get a really good understanding of what every level is expected to do and what to know about it so for example if you are a developer there are two paths one is called the individual contributor path and the other one is the leadership track now a lot of times you will find that an ic path has not that many levels compared to an leadership path and that is why a lot of developers end up becoming managers because they don't know how else to grow unless they go into a leadership track but it doesn't necessarily have to you need to find the right company and the team where these levels are properly defined so you can keep growing even after you reach a specific level so for example as a developer you can first become a entry level developer then you join to an intermediate developer and then you go to a senior developer but whereas if you are already a senior developer or even a high intermediate you can become a technical lead, a staff dev, or a engineering manager. I have some good news. I have been working on a course to take you from a developer to a engineering manager and make you a very successful engineering manager. So if you are interested, add yourself to the waitlist. This course will cover everything that we have talked about in this specific engineering manager series. But there's a lot more that I couldn't cover in this series that i will cover in the course so please feel free to check it out and take a look in the description below now it's a very common thing that th there would be three different levels in a developer titles for example there would be an entry level developer an intermediate developer and a senior developer and a senior is supposed to take on a lot more leadership responsibilities and tasks compared to an intermediate or an entry level developer and a senior developer is also maybe asked to mentor maybe more entry-level devs or maybe devs more junior to them just so that they start practicing their leadership responsibilities as well so being senior doesn't just mean that you write code but you also need to make sure that you're mentoring others and helping improve your processes your team processes and so on as well but the minute you become a senior developer it does open up two paths for you one is that you can become a technical lead a staff developer after that, you can become a solution architect. Now, again, it completely depends in every company that after a senior developer, you can become an architect. And what is the difference between an architect and a staff developer or a tech lead? Well, an architect is mainly responsible for architecting the different apps. They are responsible for maybe growing the team. An architect really takes a look at the company's architecture holistically and recommends the best practices and makes sure that the architecture makes sense. And you might you have heard the joke that an architect does draw a lot of boxes, which is not wrong, but an architect does a lot more and they think about the company holistically, the company architecture holistically, technically. Then a senior developer could also become a technical lead or a staff dev and a tech lead would essentially be more responsible for leading all the technical responsibilities uh, of a developer for example but depending on the company after a tech lead you can become a principal developer or a distinguished engineer or a fellow now again these are different levels and the responsibilities keep growing but again and, and the scale at which you do these things are also different. So for example, a distinguished engineer or a principal developer or a fellow role 
may not be available in more smaller or medium sized companies because there is not a need for it. But in bigger companies such as the Fortune 500 companies, you will more likely see these roles just so that people when they reach a specific level, they're still able to grow and they have something to strive for and they don't just leave the company. So as a developer, you can take the IC path and this is what your path will look like. So how does a leadership path look like? Well, let's say you are a senior dev or a tech lead or a solution architect and you can basically go to becoming a engineering manager. So you might be wondering what's the difference between a tech lead and an engineering manager? Well, or a staff developer and engineering manager. Now, tech lead and staff developer can be completely different responsibilities and roles, and most likely they are, but a lot of companies also have them more or less the same. So let's talk about the difference between a tech lead and an engineering manager. You can think of a tech lead as a technical partner to an engineering manager. An engineering manager is responsible for the leadership of the team they are responsible for making sure that their proper processes they're managing the people they are understanding the organization strategy and making sure that the technical strategy is also intact but who is responsible for executing it it's the tech lead a tech lead is responsible for all the technical aspect of things having said that sometimes a tech lead is in fact the engineering manager in specific companies but a tech lead more or less would be responsible for executing the technical vision of the company and making sure that the architecture is intact and making sure that the developers are following the best practices, they are participating in code reviews and so on. Whereas the engineering manager are more towards process, people, technical excellence, making sure the strategy is intact. If they do have any questions or if they do have if they do want to implement specific things and give feedback, they would necessarily work with the tech lead and provide that feedback so that they work well together and make sure that the techni technical leader is responsible for it. But in ultimately, the leadership of the team is more on the engineering manager versus the tech lead because engineering manager is responsible for management of people as well. Engineering management role is more of a leadership role, whereas a tech lead is less of a leadership role. They are still considered on the IC path and may not be included in specific leadership meetings because they are necessarily more tied to the technical aspects of things. An engineering manager would be going into those meetings, understanding the strategy, giving feedback, talking to stakeholders, and then partnering with tech lead to give that information and share that information with the team. So there's that barrier, but sometimes technical leads have that management experience as well. So they are also invited to those specific meetings as well. Tech lead are also more hands-on compared to engineering manager, and they are responsible for the delivery of specific features, whereas engineering managers are less hands-on and depending on their responsibilities and the scope of the position, they may not even code, for example, because there is a tech lead role. But in a lot of companies, there is no tech lead involved at all. In that case, an engineering manager does play a tech lead role or they look for lead developers within the team that are interested in potentially becoming tech leads and engineering manager works with them to become technical leads and help grow them and improve their technical skills and leadership skills. Because as a tech lead, you do need to have leadership skills. And that is why it can be confusing because it is there is a overlap of skills. So what does growth look like after you become an engineering manager? Well, you can become a senior engineering manager and the difference between the two is engineering manager does lead a team of developers, but a senior engineering manager leads a team of managers so they have several engineering managers reporting under them i have been both an engineering manager and a senior engineering manager and i was working towards being a director so a director is more or less responsible for a specific domain they are they th look at things more holistically beyond what a senior engineering manager would do they're responsible for a really big domain and making sure the senior engineering managers have what they need and they are taking a look at things even more holistically so it can happen that being a director you are 
responsible for a even bigger domain and you have a lot more pressure and stress because of it. Similarly, senior director is the same idea. A few directors are reporting into senior directors and same thing for VP as well. A VP overlooks the entirety of engineering and they have a bunch of directors and senior directors reporting into, into the VP and the VP is most likely reporting into the CTO and so on, right? But again, like there are so many different positions in tech especially on the leadership track that you can go on to if you just want to climb the ladder. If you don't want to, that's completely okay. If you decide that, hey, I just want to be a engineering manager. I don't want to grow more. I don't want to take more responsibility. That's completely okay because you can just focus on that specific position. The more you grow, the more responsibilities you are going to have as a developer. So you really need to assess where you see yourself in five years or 10 years. You may not know now and that's completely okay. You can try a position and figure out if you like it or not and that is why it is my recommendation to all developers to if there is an opportunity of a leadership position within the team or if there's an opportunity of getting senior even if you are on the IC track take that position and first try it out and see if you like it and if you do like it then work with your manager on potentially a promotion path for you because you have already proven yourself for those skills. So I really hope this makes sense. There is a website called levels.fyi. This is a really good website to check what the different levels are in every company, what salaries every position should have, and how it all works together. Because this is extremely important for you before you join a team or a company to look at levels.fyi and take a look at the different positions and where you stand as well. I highly recommend you to reach out to someone in the company and understand what the different positions are so that you know where you stand and can apply for the position accordingly. Now, it can be very easy to say based on all these titles that we looked at that tech lead is supposed to do this or staff engineer is only supposed to do that or an engineering manager is only tied to maybe the people management responsibilities. But every company is so different that you might see that there's a lot of overlap and that is why it could lead to a lot of confusion when you're looking for a job as a leader or as a developer in general. So make sure you take a look at the different positions in the company and depending on the scope of the org, like how big your company is and the scope of the work, there's also a staff developer involved and potentially a principal developer that oversees even a bigger domain or a specific domain. So for example, if let's say you wanna make sure that the notifications in your company are properly taken care of, there should be some sort of notification architecture that's there for maybe mobile web and so on. So how will the architecture look like? And in that case, maybe a technical lead, maybe tied to a small team, will not be able to handle that and might not have the domain expertise. And there needs to be someone like a principal developer that looks at notifications for the entire company and works with different teams implementing those notifications. So maybe works with the mobile team working for mobile notifications, works with the web team for web notifications and so on. So that from a user perspective, those notifications are the same and users don't need to know the technical architecture and all the behind the scenes of the code. So again, depending on your company, these roles can be very different, but it's important to know which company you're going for. So accordingly, you can go for the position as well. Now, here is my ask for you. If you join a company and if you notice that there are no career ladders or expectations are not clearly defined, please work with your manager, please work with your HR and give feedback to them to make sure that these do get implemented. Because without these, it's incredibly difficult for developers to grow. And otherwise, one-on-ones with your manager are just going to be things you just talk about and there is no action being implemented. Or if you do give this feedback and if your manager says that you need to work on X thing and if you do work on it, suddenly there's a Y thing that was never talked about that which, you're prob which probably your manager heard from some other manager who probably has more influence in the company. So make sure that everything is documented so that you know exactly what it needs and what you need to get promoted within the company. 
Now, if there's no career path or if there is no documentation, you can take the initiative to define it. It doesn't matter what level you are at. In fact, the more initiative you take and the more support you get, this will start to get more defined for all developers within the company and having a process will really help in this case. So I really urge you to create a process or create something in your company if it doesn't exist and try to get an alignment from HR or your manager to begin with just to get started. I really hope this gives you a solid understanding for what to look out for when you're looking for a job, the different titles in the industry, the different career paths and so on. If you do like this video, please like the video and subscribe to my channel and let me know in the comment what type of roles you're looking for and what you like about this video. All right, I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye for now.